Number 1. Shamaelian Oal Molecular Cloud The center part of the Shamaelian Eye Dark Molecular Cloud, which is 630 light-years away, is seen in this image by NASA's James Webb Space Telescope's near-infrared camera. The infrared glow of the young outflowing protostar said 110 IRS-4 illuminates the chilly, wispy cloud material. The light from several background stars, seen as orange spots behind the cloud, may be utilized to discover ices in the cloud which absorb starlight as it passes through them. An international team of astronomers has announced the finding of several ices in the deepest parts of a cold molecular cloud studied too far. This finding allows astronomers to investigate the simple ice molecules that will be incorporated into future exoplanets, while also providing fresh insight into the development of more complex molecules, which are the first step in the formation of the building blocks of life. Number two gas in the Southern Ring Nebula. The Webb Space Telescope provides strikingly varied perspectives on the same scene. Each image combines near-infrared and mid-infrared light from three different filters. Webb's view of the Southern Ring Nebula, at left, emphasizes the very hot gas that surrounds the center stars. This heated gas is surrounded by a sharp ring of colder gas, as shown in both photos. Webb's picture, at right, depicts the star's fragmented outflows that have spread further into the galaxy. The majority of the molecular gas outside the band of colder gas is likewise cold. It's also clumpier, with dense knots of molecular gas forming a ring around the center stars. One of the things that drew my attention was the strong difference between the images of the hot ionized gas and the cold molecular gas. Isabel Alleman of Brazil's Federal University of Itajuba remarked, The hot gas is very smooth, but the cold gas has these little clumps, spikes, and arcs in it. Webb's photos are extremely detailed. She and the research team were able to create far more accurate models to demonstrate when gas was ejected by the central star by accounting for the temperatures and gas contents in both areas inside and outside the band, and by combining Webb's data with precise measurements from other observatories. Number 3. Max Rho 647 Max Rho 647's immense gravity works as a cosmic lens, bending and magnifying light from the more distant Max Rho 647 JD system. It also triple lensing the JD system, allowing its picture to appear in three different places. These photos are labeled JD1, JD2, and JD3 and are highlighted with white boxes. Zoom in views are presented in the panels to the right. Blue was assigned to wavelengths of 115 and 1 1.5 microns, F150W, F150W, green to wavelengths of 2.0 and 257 microns, F200W, F2257W, and red to wavelengths of 3.65 and 4.44 microns, F365W, F4W in this image from Webb's near infrared camera. Number 4. Neptune Close Up. For the first time in more than three decades, Webb's near infrared camera image of Neptune brings the planet's rings into sharp focus. In this view, the clearest visible elements of Neptune's atmosphere are a series of bright patches in the planet's southern hemisphere that depict high-altitude methane ice clouds. A small band of light ringing the planet's equator, on the other hand, might be a visible trace of global atmospheric circulation, which propels Neptune's winds and storms. Webb has also discovered a continuous ring of high-latitude clouds around a previously unknown vortex near Neptune's southern pole for the first time. Number 5, NGC 7496 Webb's mid-infrared instrument took this image of the neighboring galaxy NGC 7496, which includes compass arrows, a size bar, and a color key for reference. The north and east compass arrows indicate the image's direction in the sky. It's worth noting that the relationship between north and east in the sky is reversed when compared to direction arrows on a map of the ground. A scale bar labeled 3,500 light-years, 
30 arc seconds is shown in the lower right. The scaling bar's length is around one-fifth the image's whole width. A color key is provided below the image, indicating which MIRI filters were used to construct the image and which visible light color is allocated to each filter. Number 6. Fomalhaut. Dusty Debris. Disk Web's mid-infrared instrument captured this image of the dusty debris disk orbiting the young star Fomalhaut. It exposes three layered bands that reach 14 billion kilometers from the star. Webb displayed the inner belts for the first time, which had never been seen previously. Sharp views of the outermost belt have already been captured by the Hubble Space Telescope, Herschel Space Observatory, and the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array. However, none of them discovered any structure within it. These bands are most likely sculpted by unseen planets' gravitational forces. Number 7. Enceladus Plume A water vapor cloud reaching more than 20 times the size of Saturn's moon. Enceladus can be seen in an image from NASA's James Webb Space Telescope's NIR spec. The inset, a Cassini orbiter image, illustrates how little Enceladus looks in the Webb image in comparison to the water plume. Webb is allowing researchers to view firsthand for the first time how this plume supplies the water supply for Saturn's whole system and rings. Astronomers have estimated that around 30% of the water stays within this torus, a fuzzy donut of water that is co-located with Saturn's E-ring and the other 70% escapes to feed water to the rest of the Saturnian system. Enceladus, a 3 13-mile-wide ocean planet roughly 4% the size of Earth, is one of the most fascinating scientific targets in our solar system in the quest for life beyond Earth. A worldwide reservoir of salty water exists beneath the Moon's frozen outer crust, and geyser-like volcanoes emit jets of ice particles water vapor, and organic compounds from cracks in the moon's surface known colloquially as tiger strips.